All right. Um, so, so, so let let's talk about graphs of you know um, how do we, how do we if, we if we change the input for the sine function as a multiple of x, how does the graph behave? So I, I put on the screen here. This is just regular plain vanilla y equals sine x. Sure. We know it goes up to one. Mm -hmm. We know it goes down to minus one, and we know that the wavelength yeah. is two pi. Yes. So I'm going to, uh, just so I can draw on it, I'm going to grab a clip here uh -huh. of it. And so let me just write what, what we said here. We know that this zero uh -huh. is 2 pi for the yes. regular. Yes. And then this must be halfway back. Yeah. So, so that be must be pi. Yeah. So I'm going to concentrate on this point here. Sure. That's zero, zero. Uh -huh. That's pi zero. Okay. So... I guess if I let's put a let's put a two in front of here. Sure. So I'm gonna I'm gonna think about the graph now. It's not just sine x. I'm gonna write uh, clumsily write y equals sine two x. So we're gonna make the argument that. I put a 2 in front of the x, uh -huh. the y is still like the sine of something. Sure. So the biggest a sine could ever be is 1, the smallest a sine could ever be is minus 1. So it still goes makes up sense. to 1 and down to minus 1. Yep, absolutely, makes sense. My, intu my, my initial intuition is throwing a 2 in front of here uh -huh. should like stretch it this way. That sounds right, right? Let's see if what happens, you know, so let's, let's focus on that pi, x is equal to pi, right there, right? So if I'm looking at y is equal to two sine two x, and I want that, that point, I want two x to be equal to pi. Because last time we took the sine of pi and got zero. Zero, exactly. Now we're taking the sine of? Two x to be sine, two x to be pi, so I get sine pi to be zero. So from there I get x is equal to pi over 2. So that point for the new graph is going to be pi over 2. So like the symmetry, that makes this pi over 2, uh -huh. that must make this pi. pi oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my intuition was wrong. Yeah, well, yes, a little bit, sorry. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I can see why, you know, we, we, you know, we multiplying everything by two. So why, why not think about it stretching out? But it's kind of shrinking a little bit. So a normal, like going back to the original wavelength, mm -hmm. the original wavelength was two pi. Yes. And now the original wavelength is pi. Pi. So, so, so that means I, if I'm starting on the x-axis, going counterclockwise on the unit circle, I only got to... 180 degrees. So let me catch up with you. So yeah. you got only then, got to here exactly before you got through a full, full wavelength. Full wavelength. So there's still another bottom half of the unit circle. Exactly. But but that going to that's going to look like exactly like that first two pieces, right? From zero to pi. It just has one more of that. So I got one wave in the top of the circle. Uh -huh and a second wave in the bottom of the circle. Exactly. So normally, I would get one wave uh -huh. per revolution of the circle. Exactly. And now we put a two in front, and we got yeah, two, two waves, waves. For one circle. For one circle. Yeah. So this coefficient of two, it's giving me the number of waves per circle. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we can think about that way. Yeah, yeah. So, so here is a question. So what if I change that? Instead of 2x, what if I'm interested in kx for any constant? K. Okay, so I'm going to throw a k in front. Mm -hmm. Now, let's let's do what you let's do what you did before. Sure. This was on a normal sine graph, a uh -huh. plain vanilla sine graph. Uh -huh. This was pi. Yes. So the argument was pi. The angle was pi. Uh -huh. But now I've got the kx is going to be equal to, to pi. pi. And so solving, now I'm getting that x value. Uh -huh. This first yeah. zero point yep. is pi over k. Yes. 
So in the previous case, k was 2, so that's why we got pi over 2 for x. But now it works for any number any, k. Any, 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 yeah, any value k, yeah. So this point here is pi over k. Yeah. So now that means this point here would be twice that, right? So yes. this other point would be, let me, uh, that would be 2 pi over 2 pi over k. Yeah. Oh, and 2 pi is one revolution of exactly. a circle. Yeah. So I'm dividing it by k. So if k was, let's say, 8, yeah. each wavelength would be 2 pi over 8, would be one circle over 8, yeah. an eighth of a circle. So I would get 8, eight in there. Eight, yeah. So you can, you're, from what you're saying then, that k in front, that's just equal to the number yeah. of wavelengths per circle. per circle. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, but to make not to make things more complicated, um, we've been saying k. You know, we said two, we said eight. What if k is a fraction? Okay, for, so for I'm gonna, one half. So I'm gonna go put. Now I could go one half times x, or sure. you might you might see that as x that. Or, yeah. But I'm still making k being a half. So yes. let's. I'm just gonna throw a half in there just to follow the, what we did sure, before. Sure. Sure. And when I cross multiply that up, that's going to be 2, two pi. pi. So that means this point here yeah, is 2, two pi. pi. That's already a circle. Already a circle. So this one hump of sine mm -hmm. takes a whole circle. Circle, yeah. So to get my full sine wave, I need twice around the circle. So two revolutions of a circle to give me one hump, then two hump, yeah. one full sign. Yeah. So then the wavelength is like twice as long twice as... Twice as long, yeah. yeah. And, and so I, I think the idea is like, so if k, the constant we multiplied, if that is bigger than or equal to one, we can think about it being kind of shrinking. You so know, compressing it this way, because yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're trying to squeeze more wavelengths yeah. in the two pi. Yeah. And if it is between, you know, if it is less than one, or is, you know, between, you know, minus one and one, you know, then you're kind of stretching it out a little bit. It's a, if it's a, so I'm just repeating what you're saying yeah. so I get it. So if it's a fraction, that means that you're, you're only getting a fraction of a wavelength exactly. per circle. Exactly. So you have to go through more circles yeah. to get a full wavelength. Yeah. So it looks like you stretched out this way because yeah. I have to go through more Multiple, circles yeah. Yeah. to get through. Yeah, yeah exactly. okay. Exactly, yeah. So altering the wavelength then is just this, go back to just in general so I can reiterate it to myself yeah. here. So if I have si sine equals kx, uh -huh. then kx, the the this is always zero zero. Yes. The next, the next uh, zero point should be pi over two. Uh -huh. So I can set that k x equal to pi over two uh -huh. and figure out what, like what the x value has to be here. Yeah. Oh no, uh, pi right? Pi. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, pi. Oh. You're right. So then that makes that x is equal to the pi over pi over k, k yeah. that's that next over k yeah. that's that next zero yes yes and exactly. this would be two pi over k because yeah. it's like one hump yeah. and then the other hump yep 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 so that's this value here yeah. Yeah. is x or sorry pi over, pi k. over k and k if someone asks me what does k mean i can say k is the number of wavelengths yep per revolution per of revolution. The unit circle exactly exactly Exactly. Okay, yeah. I think I get it. Yeah, yeah, that's good.